Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on my YouTube Artist Collective piece and I absolutely love the theme that was picked this time around. It is urban legends from your home country and yeah there was just so much to pick from and choose from and to think about. There was funny urban legends and really scary ones and incredibly sad ones so it was quite a range of stories that we could pick and choose to tell and I know for a fact that there were several of them that I really want to find a way to to draw them again to draw another urban legend piece that is and this is a bit of a side note but I do love finding things like that to inspire pieces things that I can find and pick little icons to put in the piece or little hints at a story that I know is there but isn't always apparent so I will definitely be using urban legends as a jumping off point for getting ideas and inspiration in in the future but but anyways so for today I wanted to choose one from a place that I had actually lived so or at least in the area in the state since the US is so huge there are so many to pick from and I wanted to choose one that I could feel a bit of a connection with so there are a few states that I've lived in in my lifetime but I ended up choosing the one from Indiana which is generally referred to as Diane of the Dunes which I thought was kind of funny because it's very specifically about a woman in a lake but but anyways it actually is a really not too scary little urban legend I thought it was pretty cute and a little bit funny but but basically very very basically and I'll talk a little bit more about the app uh, the actual urban legend in a bit but it is simply that there is a lake in Indiana that a woman swimming swimming naked in the lake is is seen and sighted quite frequently at nighttime in the middle of nowhere. Because apparently when this urban legend started, it was a pretty empty type of a lake. So when you saw someone there, it was unusual. But anyways, I will talk a little bit more about the actual urban legend and some of the behind the urban legend stories and information. Because I thought it was actually interesting. This one has... A very solid beginning but but anyways let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this piece and the creation process okay so for this piece I wanted the main figure the woman that's swimming in the lake Diane I wanted her to feel very ghostly I mean that is really the root of I think this this story this urban legend is that she feels like a ghost or like something that doesn't belong so that was one really key thing that I was looking for when it came to designing it and making certain choices on the colors and pretty much everything and that's another thing why I'd really like to do some more urban legend inspired pieces because there are a lot of them that I could have gotten a lot more complex with and I would have loved that but I'm going to a convention later this this week so I had to do something that I could actually manage getting done in time so so yeah I mean it was fun to work on something that had a little bit more of a simplified composition and approach to it and I really like that it's something that can lead into things and paintings that could be a little bit more complex but anyways so so yeah, that was really the, the root of this one. I wanted to show her from the back. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to give her some sort of tattoo on her back, but I hadn't quite decided what it was yet until I started actually right away with the image that I ended up really liking, which is an eye on her back. And I don't know, I think that it, it gives a little bit more of a story that isn't there in the urban legend, which I like. I like infu infusing a little bit more of my own ideas and stories into it. But I think that having, and I don't think it's there yet. I add it quite a bit later, but, but anyways, I end up adding this eye tattoo to give it a little bit more of this mystery, mystery, mysterious mystery to it. So that when you're looking at the piece and you're seeing all these different details, it implies that there's more to it and there's some things that the viewer can't know but should should want to know at least and it was a while ago but we opened up as the core members of the group to allow us to do both digital or traditional for our pieces and before that it was always traditional but i've been waiting till the exact right theme and idea that i had to do a digital piece for the youtube artist collective i i'm a strong proponent of choosing the tools and the method to create the best piece possible. So for this one, where I knew that I wanted to have this really hazy, glowy environment, and I also wanted her to be very see-through, I, I knew that digital would be the way to go to get the best result, the result that I knew I'd be able to achieve. Whereas I knew that with watercolors, it's certainly possible, but it would be a lot more of a one-shot <laughs> where I'd be able to create it once 
Um, that's not including all of the tests, of course, but once I got to the final piece, I wouldn't be able to sit there and manipulate how see-through she was and how that see-through effect was spreading throughout her body. And that's something that was really important to me. I wanted this one to be a piece that I could work on slowly to get that specific effect the way that I wanted it to. Because from the very beginning, I had a an idea or a feeling that I wanted for this piece, but not necessarily an exact execution where I wanted her to feel otherworldly and ghostly, but not necessarily be, I don't know, like a straight up transparent type figure. I wanted to create it in a way that felt a little bit more immersive with the environment. So, so yeah, uh, doing this in Photoshop was definitely the correct course of action where I could have more give and take as I was working on her. And like all of my digital pieces, this one went through a lot of different iterations as far as how I did the colors, as well as the effects of the transparency. But I I found that I was reaching for certain colors and a, a very typical color palette for me at the beginning where it was very blues and purples and this like cyan in the background for the glow. And I liked it. I liked it a lot. And that was a hard thing to move on past from because I, I knew that like my initial attachment to it was because of that color palette. It's the color palette that I love using, but I wanted to push this, this piece farther than that. There were references that I was really excited about that had this really gorgeous, not even a sunset really. I guess it was like right I guess you could say it's right after a sunset, which is what I was trying to portray in this piece. But it had this really eerie kind of a glow from behind the trees that wasn't quite, it, I don't know, it was like this rosy warmth against some greens and then this really rich dark blue purple color. And that was what I really wanted. I wanted there to be a little bit more warmth to it than I normally do, but I wanted to find a way to adapt a more warmer or a warm influence of colors into something that can feel a little bit more eerie because I find that things that are intended, and this is not obviously a rule, but I've, I find that things that tend to be a little bit more creepy or eerie or ghostly tend to be on the cooler side of the color palette. So I wanted to be able to bring some of those colors in for my references that I really loved. And I wanted to find a way to make that into a piece that I was really happy with and still preserve that feeling that I wanted. And that really was important to me because like I mentioned at the beginning, I, I chose this piece and this, not really this piece, but this urban legend to work off of because it was from an area that I had lived and I have really fond memories of, but I wanted the environment that she's in to capture some of those feelings that I had when I was at lakes in Indiana, which were actually pretty common, a lot more common than where I live now. But I loved the way that there were these really tall, lush trees that would grow right up to the waterline and sometimes even into the lake. And I wanted it to feel like there was this encroaching forest around her and there was this warmth and this depth that was happening and it was hiding things so being able to achieve that kind of a very nostalgic feeling for me through the environment that she was inhabiting was really important to me and that is again another thing why I I changed the colors as I was working on it actually kind of last minute where I I felt that what I initially did I liked as like a gut reaction because of the colors but but it wasn't connecting to that that more deep side of me, I guess you could say, where I have these memories, these really fond memories of going to this lake that's really spooky at night. And yeah, I wanted to capture that. Although thinking about it now, I kind of wish that I thought about it in the moment, but I wish that I had put some fireflies in there. So there are stars in this painting. But I think fireflies would have been a nice touch. I love fireflies in Indiana. But for the stars, I will mention this a little bit. What I did is I, and it's really actually very simple, but I created little dots, but I also had the, uh, the layer mode where it would create the special effect of a soft glow around it. And I also made sure that different stars were slightly different colors. If you'll notice when you're looking up in the night sky, different planets and different types of stars will have different colors. And I think that's really cool. And it adds a lot more depth to stars. It's surprising how much more interest you can get from adding colors rather than just having all of your stars a white color. 
And that is it for today. I absolutely loved working on this piece and working off of this prompt. It was really inspiring for me, but if you'd like to own a print of this piece, I will be including her in the Citrine art gift box that I'll be sending off in my top tier over on Patreon. So if you want to check that out, there's a link down in the description. that will take you up there. There will also be a link that will take you to my art shop so you can find all the other stuff that I have there. But that is it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will be back next week with another video.